Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sid Alpha and I'm coming to you today with a straight up news report. This one involving once again your friend and mine, Derek Smart, and his continued battle against Chris Roberts in Cloud Imperium Games. Uh, it was released two days ago that Derek Smart decided to pursue litigation against Cloud Imperium regarding Star Citizen and their expenditures while creating the game. Now, Derek Smart has been a very vocal, outspoken critic of Star Citizen, Cloud Imperium Games, and Chris Roberts in relation to their game development, the amount of time it's been taking, and more importantly, what they've been spending the money on. Um, he was initially a backer on Kickstarter. I believe he did a $250 pledge, which uh, Cloud Imperium Games refunded to him, stating... Uh, uh, it was obvious he was not a supporter of our project and was just using our visibility as a platform to gain attention and promote his current game and his past games. So as a result of Smart's outspoken criticism of the game, they decided to refund him his money and uh, basically kick him out, kick him to the curb as it will. Now, Derek Smart is a game developer of his own. He is currently working on his own Kickstarter game. Uh, which has seen significant delays its own, which is uh, not a surprise as uh, Derek Smart's games in the past have known have been known to hit several roadblocks. Uh, early on, very early on in his career in the early 90s, his most, uh, his most prominently known game, uh, which was Battlecruiser 3000 AD was significantly delayed and even taken over by another company and then released in a broken and unfinished state. So Derek Smart seems to be progressing with that streak of bad luck and potentially poor decision making. I really can't speak to that directly as I don't have any direct leads into the development process of his current games. So take that with a grain of salt please. It's not a direct criticism of Derek Smart or his company and in none of this is also any direct response or criticism of either Derek Smart, Chris Roberts, their companies or their games. What I'm going to try and do is basically concentrate on the facts of what's been going on, maybe ask a few pointed questions to try and help lead everyone to better grasp the situation. So again, two days ago it was released that Derek Smart was uh, attempting to pursue legal action against Cloud Imperium Games and he stated uh, as all previous calls for accountability have failed, we don't expect RSI, Robert Space Industries, to cooperate, hence the need to contact the federal authorities. Which means that the next steps, depending on how they respond to the letter, would be for a class action lawsuit, already in various stages of preparation, to move forward and be immediately filed. And through that, we're going to subpoena and depose every single key person while asking for specific documents during discovery, which will hopefully shed a light on what is going on. They will ask for protective orders, try to delay and drag things out, etc. We will fight it every step of the way, and my guess is that with the federal authorities involved, it may get resolved even before it gets to trial, and then we'll have answers either way. So couple of key points here that need to be pointed out. Yes, uh, Star Citizen has been in development for nearly four years now. And that has been a bit of a strain on a great many people, many, most of those people who have been backing the game. And Derek Smart seems to be calling them out on this long development process. Uh, one thing you do have to remember though, just to point out and be very specific, is that the original timeline of the game got thrown completely out of the window with the severe success of the Kickstarter program. I don't think Chris Roberts had any idea what he was getting himself into originally, as the original Kickstarter was a fairly modest sum, and this, in this game ended up churning into this giant colossal thing. In which, uh, in which uh, general game creep 
has been involved and uh, as such they have decided to stop with the stretch goals in order to be able to complete the game because if they continued as such then it would just turn into a pipe dream and a money pit where people they would have to turn out so many stretch goals that it would be a completely unfinishable game and that's not something really anybody wants I, I completely agree with their decision to do that it just makes sense because they were really starting to stretch in trying to and they were really reaching to try and come up with new stretch goals and they finally said that's it we've had enough we're done we're done let's just work on what we've got and that's fine that's perfectly fine that's actually good I was hoping they would actually do that a little bit earlier now also because of that, but because of this vastly extended scope that Star Citizen has become, of course the original concept and time frame had to be thrown completely out of the window because there are so many new portions of the game and so many new mechanics that have had to be created to match those goals to, in, to meet the, uh, the stretch goals on the funding that this game has turned into a colossal monster. It really has a lot of different components. This will be the most ambitious video game of all time. It's been said before, it'll be said again. And if Chris Roberts can pull it off, then he will go down in the history books for that. He granted all he already will for several other games he's created in the past. Yeah, I'm not trying to fanboy too much here because I am a fan of Chris Roberts, but I'm trying to remain as objective as possible. He's created a lot of fantastic, amazing games. Many of those games for people that are, you know, a little bit older like myself, remember very, very fondly from their teenage years. So, with that being said, uh, Derek Smart has been posting all over the place and has been very vocal in responding to criticism and people asking questions. Uh, he claims his desire is just for accountability and a single pane of glass for people to be able to see what the money is being spent on, how it's being spent, and why the game hasn't been finished yet. Which is admirable, or would be admirable, if you don't take a few things into account. One, Derek Smart is a game developer himself. Which also begs the question, why exactly is he being so such a vocal proponent against what they're doing at Cloud Imperium as opposed to concentrating on working on his own game. That, that question and that criticism has been raised by a huge number of people. And uh, Derek Smart has basically responded with uh, his attempt to protect us, the consumers. Which could be laudable, but let's face it, these guys are, are you know, they are leading up their companies, they're developing games, they're in this for money. Let's not make any qualms about it. This is their jobs, this is what they do. Derek Smart, it could easily be said, is using this as a platform to promote his, his own name and by that token, transversely, his company and his own video games, both past and present. I feel that is a very valid concern which has been raised and has not been properly addressed yet. Also, another thing that, ha that does need to be mentioned, which I stated a little bit just a short while ago, but we'll go back to here, is that, yes, this game is huge. It's going to take a long development cycle. But you also have to bear in mind, Mr. Smart, one very important thing. Take a look at a game like Mass Effect 3 would be a very good example. What was the development time on that? That was approximately three years, am I right? Pretty sure, yeah, three years. So take a game like Mass Effect 3, while yes, it had a fair amount of content, even though it had a bullshit ending that everyone hated, with good reason. Uh, it also, you could take most of those components in Mass Effect 3 and compare those to the components of Star Citizen. Basically, you could put Mass Effect 3, dump it inside of Star Citizen, and shake it around and rattle in the bottom with the amount of content that is being created for this game. 
So as such, it is understandable that there will be a longer development cycle. You have to bear in mind this isn't 1990s, this isn't early 2000s. A three to four year development cycle is not out of the realm of possibility and considering the vast scope of the game involved, uh, this is obviously going to be much, much larger than anything that uh, a game like Mass Effect has to offer that a four-year development cycle, five-year development cycle isn't out of isn't out of reach. It isn't out of the realm of possibility. It's not beyond the realm of understanding. It is something where there are a lot of disparate components. You have the Squadron 42 module, which is basically its own standalone game. It is, uh, you know, it will be a fully fleshed out campaign with, with cutscenes and voice acting. That component alone would basically we're expecting will probably be the equivalent in size to Mass Effect 3. And then you also have a lot of other components with the open world aspect and the, you know, the dogfighting module, the exploration module, the the uh, first person shooter module, so many other things that are being added into this. Basically, this game is approximately the size and scope of th between 3 and 5 other games com combined. Now, do you honestly think that a three, a two-year development cycle, a three-year development cycle, even a four-year development cycle, will be enough for something that large in scope? Now, bear in mind, Derek Smart does raise a few interesting points at the rate that Cloud Imperium is burning through money, which I believe they stated is approximately two to three million dollars a month. Um, they there is a concern that they may actually run out of money before completing the game. That is a always a very real concern, but not just a concern in, sc in the scope of Star Citizen. This is actually a concern in the realm of all crowdfunded games, and is also a very real concern with uh, you know early access games and things of that nature, which is you know kind of similar to what Star Citizen has become. It's with the different components that people who buy into the game are getting access to. This is kind of an early access style of feature set. Now they do have people who subs who willingly subscribe on a monthly basis to provide extra money. They also have the YouTube videos that they're kicking out, which uh, I'm hoping they're drawing monetization from that as well to try and help augment the overall income in order to continue supporting the game until they can get to that 1.0 status and actually have a release. Um, but overall, this is something where you know, Derek Smart, he tends to kind of get up on a soapbox, and he, yes, he does have a fairly large ego. Let's not make any qualms about it. He has a giant ego. But because of that, also, you also have to think that, is it really Derek Smart's place to be criticizing in this vocal and public fashion? Is it really his... his is it really his place to white knight and champion protecting the consumer from Cloud Imperium games? If such a thing is even needed. I really don't feel that it is. Because Derek Smart has his own company to run, his own game to create, his own, comp his own game which is also delayed currently, significantly delayed, which you know, a lot of people feel he should be concentrating on that instead. Now, I'm sure that uh, as we get closer to down the line, and if we actually reach the point where Cloud Imperium starts running out of funding and it's starting to look like the game might not be completed, then we can start drawing into this and find out, you know, what the money has been spent on, where is it gone, what have you done with it, and things like that. But at this point, it's not really necessary and it's not it's not something that a another game developer should be doing okay you have your own company to lead you have your own game to create Chris Roberts is over here working on his stuff you should be over here working on your stuff okay that's just how a huge amount of people feel now 
Also, it could be said that if Derek Smart is right in any way, maybe this may not be such a bad thing after all. There is that possibility. I personally am not going to pick a side on this as this raises, this raises a lot of interesting questions on either side. One mainly being, what, is, what are Derek Smart's motives behind doing this? Why is he doing this? Why is he being such a vocal antagonizer against the creation of this game and Chris Roberts' company? Uh, another thing that has been brought up has been you know, a fair amount of jealousy because you remember Derek Smart had a vision for a very similar scope and size of a game but back in 1989 which that was completely inconceivable at the time and a completely unattainable goal which Derek Smart unfortunately realized the hard way because of mostly the technology of the time it was unable to be able to complete it in a timely fashion you know funding ran out and things like that and I think that may be coloring Derek Smart's opinion here is that he had gotten so badly burned in the past that maybe he's thinking that something might happen moving down the road with Star Citizen and maybe some part of him is try is genuinely trying to protect us the consumer maybe another part of him is trying to save Chris Roberts from himself or maybe it could be straight up jealousy and small mindedness we'll basically leave that up to you to decide so well, I'll be keeping my eye very closely on this moving down the road, and I may actually release additional videos as things develop with this, uh, with this litigation. But until then, my name is Sid Alpha, and I'll see you next time. Oh, one final thing, folks. I will actually be reaching out to Derek Smart on Twitter and posting this in my video as well. Uh, because what I'm going to try and do, and I probably won't even receive a response or I'll be readily turned down, is I will actually be seeking out a live uh, Skype call interview with Derek Smart in regards to these allegations and in order to get a, a better, a more firm idea of his thoughts surrounding this and his decision-making process in pursuing this litigation. So we'll see how that goes. I'll keep you updated on it, possibly in my next video. Until then, I'll see you next time. Have a good night. Or day. Afternoon. Whichever. Hey folks, Sid Alpha here. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, subscribe, and share. If you want to check out some other First Impressions videos, feel free to click on the link on the left. If you're interested in staying more up to date with what's happening in the PC gaming community, feel free to click on the link to your right. The subscribe button is down the bottom. Please show your support and punch that in the thing as hard as you can. And thanks.